Back in another place in another time before Scandaval, that's right, before Scandaval, back when she was BFFs with Tom and Ariana, first she fell out with Ariana and now she fell out with Tom. But back when she was friends with Tom and Ariana, when Tom and Ariana were together before Scandival, back when Jax wasn't on Bravo, before the Valley was greenlit, back before Stassi was back. I mean, she's not back on Bravo, but she's back in the Vanderverse. Before all of that, we sat down with the one and only Billy Lee. I find this chat so interesting. I always find it interesting when we look back at a chat and just see how many things were foreshadowed, how many things are different. This wasn't that long ago. It was right before Scandal broke, literally right before. So we share these never before seen videos of our chat with Billy Lee. And was there foreshadowing of what's to come? I mean, not even just Scandal, but her fallout with Tom. I find these chats so interesting. And we share a series of them here today taking part on Valentine's Day and a new comedy. Talk Doing a comedy show, yes. yeah, on this Valentine's Day. Um, and Girls' Night Out. Yeah. I, I have like five shows, I think, coming up that I have to um, post about, actually. Wow. Are they um, all in this area? or mm -hmm. <clears throat> Keeping it local. Yeah, the goal is to get, like, do a little tour. I wouldn't mind, like, touring. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to do, like, just try to schedule a show every night for five nights um, and then take a little break and then do that again. Like I'm still figuring it out because I really was just doing the stand up and then I got this um, this pilot, the comedy special, and then I was just preparing. I was working with two coaches. Um, yeah, Lisa Sunset, who owns Pretty Funny Women, she was my teacher and she's done amazing work with me. Um, and then her assistant, who now is also my coach, um, Jen, like, yeah, they just, they're really like, let's do this. And so now I'm like, okay, I guess I'm going to be booking these shows. Do you change up like your routine? Do you love being in front of a live audience? Um, like you said, like that's so vulnerable. Yeah, it's very vulnerable. I'm, what I love about acting is because you can be really vulnerable with your partner, and it's not about the audience. And I feel like there's so much freedom there. And then when you do stand up, your partner is the audience. You have to do audience work. You have to talk to them. You have to like, it's like having a conversation. And that's what's so scary because I'm, I'm not used to being in front of a bunch of people. Um, it's frightening. And then you're also being in front of a bunch of people and talking about your tight pussy. So it's like... <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. Like when you're acting and you are vulnerable, but you're playing someone else, like an exactly. audience, you're talking about yourself and mm -hmm. it's kind of like you're setting yourself up for... Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so interesting, um, which is why I had to get back into acting class because I was like, I love it. Is there, like, a certain actor or actress you would love to, like, work opposite if you could? Um, like, no matter how big or small? Yeah, I don't... I mean, no, I don't really, like, have... I guess I should think about that, but no, I don't really have... Um, I love, like, working um, with a masculine energy, like... I find that that dynamic of like if it's like the character, like they're my husband or partner or anything like um, and going really deep and being really vulnerable and emotional. I, I really I think, too, because they say like with acting, you know, you can pull from trauma, past experiences. And I told my my teacher, he's like, how do you get these emotions? And like he's just like really. um impressed by me and I was like oh it's all the rejection that I've <laughs> experienced over the years a lot of cis men rejected me um, especially once I told them that I was trans and um, yeah there's just as as my story and, and being trans there was a lot of trauma and so it's very easy for me to tap into that and play with it which is fucked up pull from your childhood, you pull from Vanderpump mm -hmm. Rules. I mean, I know I make a joke, but like that 
has to add to it, right? I mean, it's the same type of bullying on the show. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, there's definitely... I felt rejection in that experience, too. But again, also, and I tell myself this all the time, the rejection is redirection. I definitely think I was redirected um, in a big way, especially with Vanderpump. Would you... I mean, there's so many different forms. Would you ever do reality TV again? Um, I've been approached several times, and I've said no. Um, I do think there is something that I'm interested in, but I would be developing it. Um, and it's very new. I don't still know if I would be in front of the camera for it, um, but... I'm exploring. I'll never say no to it, especially because I want to adopt. And like, I think um, if I was to tell my adoption story and go through that experience of becoming a mother, I think that if that could really help bring awareness um, to adoption and also to trans people and LGBTQ people who want to become a parent, I would possibly go in front of the camera for that. That, right. Like I'm saying, there's a lot more than just Vanderpump Rules. There's so many, mm -hmm. you know, especially you look at like Netflix and some of the work they're doing. Yeah. And like there's a lot of reality out there that's kind of different. Yeah. And if I have some control, if I'm producing it, um, then I'll feel safe. It's really just feeling safe um, and making sure that I'm handled with care. What about your book? Talk to us about your book that you wrote that's coming out about microaggressions. Yeah. It's called Why Are You So Sensitive? Um I have amazing contributors. Um, and, you know, I, I talk about how I've been a victim of microaggressions, but also I've been the perpetrator where I just my ignorance saying, you know, like, for instance, I was at a rally. It was a Greenpeace um, global warming rally on La Cienega Boulevard a few years ago. And my model friend, Gorgeous, came up to me and we both had our signs and we're like, oh, my God. And she's like, yeah, girl. And she's like, you know, I'm all about the planet, but I'm also about my products. And I was like, oh, my God, I know. I was like, we're so bipolar. And she actually is bipolar and she's a, um, a mental health activist. And I was like, the way she looked at me and how I just like used that in such a jokingly way. She was definitely um, taken back. And my sign, <clears throat> yeah, I just, I remember, like, my sign said, how dare you or something. I just remember being like, I just walked away feeling so stupid. And so, yeah, this book is really to help people um, try to just do better, you know, including myself. Um, and it's done really well. And I have really amazing people that that's collaborated on it. Um, and I'm just excited for for people to see it and learn from it. What did you learn anything from writing this book? Yeah, I learned a lot. Oh my God, uh, so many different people have contributed with their stories. Um, and, you know, I didn't even know what a microaggression was for the longest time. I mean, I really didn't either until a certain Point, yeah, which I don't know what that point was, but if you look back like five years, definitely not five years ago. I wouldn't. I yeah. Yeah, and you know, micro, so I get it. Yeah, microaggressions are are usually disguised as like compliments. Um, you know, a lot of people would be like, but I think the biggest one I got, especially during Vanderpump, and these are even from fans, is like, I can't believe you're not a real woman. Like, you look better than me. Like, I'm how do you look better than me? And I'm a real woman. And it just doesn't, there's all these little things that would happen that didn't make me feel good. And I couldn't understand why. And I didn't have the words for it. Um, but, you know, you're saying that I am not a real woman. And um, also, it's really harmful for trans people who maybe not didn't have the money.